Hello everyone. Here we are again, the familiar circuit board, to see another fault today. But first of all, if you don't want to miss these videos and repairs, subscribe to my channel and click on the notifications to receive the latest videos. So let's start to see what this circuit board is doing. The action I'm showing you is for all power supplies in general, and I'm showing you the way of thinking. And also, we have the design of this circuit board. So I plug it in and see that the board is not doing anything. The light is not even turning on, it's not outputting any power. This is what we see at first glance, and let's see what actions we will take. I will show you the design first, and then we will see what actions we can take on the board. And of course, the first action is not to change capacitors, as I would often say. The recap. Let's go to the plan. we see that the MOSFETs board, either with an oscilloscope or in another way that I will show you shortly, to see if the oscillator that provides the pulses from here to the gate is working, and then I will check if I have continuity from the other pin of the MOSFET going to the ground through the resistor here that is part of the circuit. These diodes here are not present on the board. They are parts that have been removed. They might exist, they might exist on other versions of this board and the R82 resistor that is here next to it. So we do not consider them in our measurement. We will only measure the R101 resistor that is here next to it, which is the relevant one. So I will check all the intermediate components and the MOSFET, of course, which is located over here. And to remind you, that the 310 volt will be referred to the wounded who are here on the plan, which is for the smoothing to 220 volts. With these connections, I will start. Let's see it on the board. I have plugged it in. Here are our three sports that I will measure. In the potentiometer and in the voltmeter above, on the 1000 volt scale. I see that it gives me 320 volt. So the voltage understands that it's rectified and smoothed normally. There are the 320 volt. So the next action is, let's see if they pass through the resistor and go to the middle leg of the MOSFET. I connect it to the drain of the capacitor and to the middle leg. Here, I see that it also outputs 320 volts. So it completes the circuit and goes back to the middle leg of the MOSFET and without throwing me any significant errors. As we saw in a previous video where I couldn't measure the middle leg. And this means that I don't have a pulse here. It has already cut off the circuit for me. And the MOSFET that would interrupt me is not working. The next measurement I will take will be on the MOSFET base. I will not use an oscilloscope. Look here. I will change the scale. I will set it to a very low scale at 2 volts. And I will measure by grounding the washer of the capacitor and on the MOSFET gate. Let's see what it does. Look now. I see it here. Let me touch them well for half a minute. Touch well. Good. So you see that it zeroes and gives a small voltage. It zeroes and gives a small voltage over there. I understand that it is trying to give some pulse to the pendulum and then stops. So it seems to me like the pendulum is working. But even in the middle foot, I don't have any variation. So yes, the MOSFET receives some pulse, but it doesn't output anything. I have shown in a previous fault what the middle foot should do here. If you watch a video, you will see the previous one. I will put the videos down in the description for you to see exactly what it should do. Another peculiarity of this fault is that it holds a charge on the capacitors. That is, I have removed the fuse now and I see that I have 270 volts on the capacitors. The voltages remain there, around 270 volts. Another proof that neither the radiator nor the switch is working. So I will discharge the capacitor with a bulb I have here at 220 volts. You see, so we don't get any shocks. This is something we should do for all faults. We should first check those that are in the one holding the large charge that can shock us. 
We see now it is discharged, it's not a problem, we can relax. And the next measurement we will do without power is to see if the MOSFET has a short circuit. I will connect my multimeter here and measure all the pins to see if there is a short circuit. Usually MOSFETs short circuit if they have an issue. Specifically, whenever I check, I connect all the pins and check, it doesn't show any short circuit. So it must be good. I won't desolder it to see if it's completely correct. I will simply measure the line from the third pin to see if it goes to the ground through the resistor I connected in the schematic initially. Meaning, I will measure here at the third pin of the MOSFET and at the ground on the capacitor side with ohms. Let's see if it shows any resistance. All right, I measure on the capacitor side, as we said, and at the third pin, I see here that it doesn't show any resistance. See, no resistance. I should have 120 ohms from this resistor here in the middle, from what I saw in the diagram, this one here. So I will measure this resistor to see how many ohms it is now. Well, I will place the scale here and measure the resistance, and I see that it's not showing anything. It's definitely no resistance, that's for sure. In some cases, the MOSFET is short-circuited to cause these burnt resistors. Let's keep that in mind. Usually, the MOSFET shorts first, and then the resistor to the ground, which is this specific one. I will change the resistor, desolder it, measure it out of the circuit, it surely will be burnt. So since it doesn't show on the ohm circuit, I will change it and then we will see what the power supply does. All right, I have changed the resistor, plugged it in, and I see the light turning on, so it's outputting here. The power supply is displaying normally. I will not take any other measurements. I have shown you in previous videos the other measurements that the power supply can provide. I will simply unplug it and show you here on the capacitors that it no longer holds a charge. Here you can see I'm measuring above zero V on the capacitor because as soon as the light works and I unplug it, it continues to work for a while and discharges the capacitors. And I will also show you what the next step should be. Also, I will put it on the buzzer on the third pin to show you clearly that it's not short circuiting. So I connect it to the capacitor's negative and to the third pin. Here you see, I have a short circuit in my gas. That's how it should be. Do you see any other only on the third little foot? Well, that was the video. I will put you in the description as I told you and the rest of the videos I have made with the same bracket. If you don't want to miss the videos, you can follow me on my channel or on the page www.eselectronics.gr. Of course, I am waiting for your comments and questions, and good continuation to everyone. Thank you very much.